everyone. Welcome to my 12th episode of my journey with end-stage renal disease, also known as ESRD. Uh, right now, I'm getting ready to set up my next stage cycler for dialysis. And that noise you hear, that's the pure flow. We connected that. We did that yesterday, but for some reason, it keeps alerting to fluid in the tub. So I'm thinking the bag may have a leak, and that's after it primed for seven hours. So I'm thinking as it filled up, that's when the leak surfaced. But um, so I'm draining it now because I, that bag is so heavy once it's filled, <laughs> you can't lift it. So I'm draining that, and then I'm going to start from scratch. But I still have to dialyze. So this is what the pre-mix bags are for. It's when you travel and for cases like these. So I'm going to show you how to set up the, or how I set up the next stage cycler for pre-mix, with pre-mix dialysate bags. All right, so just bear with me here. Huh? All right, so let me show you what we have here. We have two boxes of dialysate. There's two five liter packs of, di uh, of dialysate or bags of dialysate in each. My prescription calls for four, which is 20 liters. So if each bag is five liters each and there's four, four times five is 20. That's my prescription. Everybody's prescription is different, but that's mine. And then we have, this is the multi-line adapter, which will attach all the dialysate bags together. To the right is our saline bag, and it's sodium chloride, 0.9%. And then you check the date on the back, and this one says uh, October 21st. So we're good there. Then we have our cartridge with dialyzer, which actually does the dialyzing. It's got all the lines and we'll show you that as we get to it. You have to wash your hands, then use the hand sanitizer, which I've done, and put on your gloves. Everything must be uh, kept as sanitary as possible. Okay? So I'll be back. Let me put my gloves on. I'll be right back. Okay. Gloves on. Oh, my sleeve here, or sleeves, I should say. We're going to go ahead and open up our five liter dialysate bag. Let me open up the box. Make sure there's no leak. Leak, sometimes there's condensation, like right there. I don't know if you can see it. There's some condensation. That's from the sterilization and then packaging right away. But sometimes it could be a leak. So just uh, check it. Anywhere, and you know it's a leak. All right, so I'm checking for it says 5,000 milliliters on here. See, and then the dates on the bottom 
It says January 1st, 2029. Wait, hold on. January 1st, 2022, my bad. Okay, so we're going to, this one is good. Let me open the next one. And I'm gonna open them all up and then we'll move on to hanging them. Okay, now that we have all four bags, so all bags unwrapped and we've checked the date, and we checked for leaks, and we checked that it was 5,000 milliliters. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hang them up here. On the drip line or drip post, whatever you want to call it. So it's got two little holes on the top of the bag. One on each corner. And you just... Hang them up. Alright, so I'm going to hang up all three and I'll be right back. Alright, so you can see I have all three bags hanging up. And it's important you have the writing facing you. That way you can always, you know, see the dates and stuff just in case you missed one. But, um, and always facing the same direction. That way you're extension here or your ports are always in the same order cap wings see what i'm saying cap wings the reason for the wings on every bag even though we're not going to use it on the ones hanging is because the fourth bag remember i get four bags the fourth bag is going to be on the warmer and that one we do use the wing and the cap ports on, on it to attach lines. So one for the multi-line adapter and this one for the dialysate line and all that. Alright, so that's the that's the reason why they all have the wings even though you don't always use them all. Because one bag, and we don't know which one, so that's why they put them on. They will always end up on the warmer and those will be used. And speaking of which Here's the one on the for the warmer. Here's the fourth bag. And again, the writing on top. Okay. Facing uh, hole because that's where you're going to hang your saline bag at. So it makes sense to do it there. So we're going to put our bag in there. And we're going to strap this puppy in. Okay. All right, then we're gonna plug in our warmer, which you just take the cord from the back and just plug it in. Shit, come on. All right, and we'll wait till we see some yellow lights. Next thing is this uh, fluid detection sensor. See it? It needs to be checked. This usually sits on the cycler right here. And what that does, it detects if there's any leaks in the cartridge where your blood is flowing through and cleansing and all that and returning. Uh, this will alarm if there's any type of blood leak or anything. Okay, so that's why that sits there. But we have to check it every day to make sure it works. So what I like to do is I like to take a wipe and just pass it along the two sensitive metal uh, bars there to make sure that it's working. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my sanitized wipe and here's the two bars and very loud. So now that I've tested that, I'm going to go ahead and sit it right back where it belongs so I can go to work as soon as I get this cartridge in. Okay? Okay, I'm ready. We're going to open the door to the cycler. Okay? And then back over here to the left behind it 
is the switch. So we're going to turn her on. And she is on. And you see all the bells and whistles. She'll come up with eights. And then a 54. And there's the 54. And she'll let you know, hey, 54 over here, so you got to let her know. All right, I hear you, I see you, do your thing. So you hit the mute button over here to, to silence the alarm. And that's also communicating with the cycler, letting her know she can go ahead and proceed. All right. So now we're going to open up our cartridge. And here's how we do that. There's perforated lines. Just turn it open, slide off the cartridge, put it on top of the bag. Save the bag. Don't throw it away because that's what you're going to wrap this up when at the end and stuff it in there. Use it as a trash bag. All right, so what we're going to do first is remove these little cards or pla little placards, I call them, and we're going to check our seals. So there's some little wings right here. You put your, on the blue and red, put your fingers on the wing to hold it and turn the seal to the right. Make sure that's nice and tight. Not too tight, just tight enough to where it's sealed. Again, hold the wings, turn to the right. And on the dirty line, which is the yellow line, that's your waistline, the wings are upside down, so you're going to hold it with your right and turn the seal to the left. Okay? Now that you've checked your seals, we're going to remove these tabs. There's four tabs. Okay? That will free up these lines. Alright? If you're ever confused on which way things go, underneath all these lines, there's a little smiley face. I don't know if you can see that, but where is she? Right, right up here where I have my thumb. There's a smiley face. You see it? That's how you know. As long as it's not upside down. So what you want to do is there's a little line holder right here. You want to get these lines out of there to free them up. And just tear that piece off, comes right off, okay? You're going to grab your cord, like so. And then grab your cartridge, and we're going to walk it over to the cycler and slide it in. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're at the cycler. We're going to sit... With the dialyzer on the outside, on the left, we're going to sit the cartridge in the cycle, okay? Now, there's a little uh, compartment here, like a little holder, line holder here. You want to attach that top line and you right in there. You want to sit it right in there. Just push it in there. And there's two more of these little locks, and it's on the right side. And you just find it, there's one dead in the center, on the right, and then one at the bottom. And you just do the same thing, just push it right in, it should slide right in there, it should be lined up with it perfectly. Okay, once you get this one in, the other one should line up perfectly. So, what you're going to do next, is you're going to take your line here, and we're going to unravel it as best as we can, because... Holding the spike, this is your spike and it's sterile. You're going to loosen your lines. Okay? They do come all tangled and they do get tangled. Don't let that get to you. It's just part of the way they wrap them. It's not anything you, you do in law. Okay? Sometimes they untangle beautifully and other times not so much. But like I said, it's just 
out of the way it's been wrapped. Alright, so I'm just trying to free my lines up here as best as I know how to do. Alright, and that is it. So now I'm going to hang up the spike on there. Okay. While I close the cycle door, making sure all the cords are away from the door. So I don't catch anything. I'm going to push and then push down. Okay? And we have this dialyzer here. So we have pushed down. Now the, this is an important part here. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the cycler. And this is where we get the pressure pod, which is, as you can see, a little circular disc, and inside it's, there's a membrane in there. So we're going to take that short cord, and we're going to find this little entry point. We're going to push in to the left, turn to the left, and then move our fingers up to the top where the seal is, and turn the seal to the right and screw that in there. Uh, now your pressure pod, okay, your access pressure pod is in there. So that's sealed. Now we're going to move on to connecting our spike, this right here, to a saline bag. So let me get the saline bag. Okay, so now we have our saline bag, 0.9% sodium chloride, 1,000 milliliters. And like we said, we checked the date on the back already. It expires October 21. See? October 21. All right, so now we're going to tear this bag open. You find a little slit and tear down. They don't always tear down for you. You gotta get in there and tear it. All right, take your bag out. Make sure there aren't any leaks anywhere. Okay, this one seems to be good. Then we're gonna go hang this up on the drip line. Okay, so we're on the drip line. We're at the drip line. We're gonna take the spike. Okay, we're gonna hang. Our saline bag with the writing facing you so that you can always see what it is just in case you ever overlook it and you happen to be putting it together and say oh wait a minute that's not sodium chloride you know what I mean so it's always a good idea to have writing facing you all right so here are the two wings let me do a little close-up on that okay there are the two wings right there. Right here. So we're going to hold the top wing as we twist off the bottom wing. We're going to then remove the cap off the sterilized uh, spike. And we're going to push the spike in and twist and turn all the way. Left and right, left and right, all the way up until you get a nice tight seal. You see that? That's what you want. And try not to poke the bag. <laughs> it's easy to do. All right, so now we're done with that part. Now we've got to connect our dialysate hanging bags to the hanging to the bag dialysate bag on the warmer okay and then we'll move on from there so let me go get that mla line okay this is our multi-line see it's got a spike to adapter okay so this one some lines come with more attachments because some people have used more bags. I only use four. I only need three lines. This has, has four lines. 
I only need three. So I'm gonna drop one and keep the three closest together. Okay? So these we're gonna connect to the bags. So let me go ahead and do a little close up there. And here's how we're gonna do it. here so I'm going to use, use this one. This is the first one so what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cap off of that line and the white cap off of one of the ports here, the one on the left, and we're going to screw that in there and make sure it's nice and tight. Then we're going to clamp for safety. Show my leak. Sometimes frangibles will be bro already broken. And the frangibles are this is the neck to the uh, tube there, to the little port. Alright, and we're going to do that with all three bags. We're going to attach these lines, these multi line adapters. We're going to attach them and then clamp. And then last but not least, the third one, getting the third line, removing the cap, and the white cap, and screwing that on there, okay, like that. So, now we've got our multi-line adapter attached to our dial safe bag. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this little tab right here at the bottom. This is your dialysate line. Um, well, it'll attach to the other green line. You'll see. Doing. Maybe not. Huh. That would be better. Anyway, this is what I did. I connected. Let me show you. I connected this little dial set piece that was attached to the MLA pack and I screwed it onto that port that has the white cap just like these did. And now I'm going to go to the wing part of it, hold the top wing, turn the bottom wing to twist it off. Then we're going to take the spike, here's another spike. We're going to take the cap off and we're going to insert it again, push in and twist and twist left and right all the way till you get it right in there. We got our spike in there. Now we're going to break our frangibles. That's next. Okay guys, so now what we want to do is break our frangibles. What are frangibles? Frangibles are these little ports that we've attached the multi-line to. Okay, see? So, here's how we do that. I am bringing you in closer. So, you're going to hold the top part of the frangible and you're going to put your thumb right at the neck of it in the middle and you're going to push forward and you hear a click, push towards you, you hear another click, you've opened that frangible. You also do a little twisty like this, okay, and then you unclamp, okay. You repeat that process. Let's show you again. Hold the top. Get your thumb right in there. Hear that? Two clicks. And then just twist it around a little bit. Make sure that's open. Unclamp. Now that fluid is running down that line. We got one more to go. Hold the top. Here's your thumb. 
the shin, push towards you, and you're open. Once you hear those two snaps, and then unclamp, that fluid's gonna run right down. See that? I don't know if you see the air, but uh, next we're going to, there's one more line. We have to call, it's called prime. And that's this one, the one we're not using. Yeah, we've got to unclamp. Well, unclamp. Okay. And then loosen the cap. And let that water, that fluid, come up to the tip and then close it back up. And there. The water has ran up through. And we have primed it. We're not going to use it, so we're going to clamp it. So those are ready, okay? Now, there's one more line. We have one more frangible that we have to break, and that's the one on the warmer bag. So, again, hold the top, push in to your hair quick, push towards you, okay? You wanna prime that line you can, you unclamp, Loosen and clamp back up until you're ready for it. Okay? So, we're done with that. Guess what? Now we get to hit the Add Fluid button. on the side floor. Okay, you see that little faucet? The only button that is lit up. That drop of water going into that glass, the little faucet, you, that's your add fluid button. You want to go ahead and hit that? And the machine will start removing air through the lines. And it gives you 23 minutes timer because that's how long it's going to take to do the systems check and move air through the lines. I want to see if you can see any of that happening. But usually you'll see it, the bubbles coming up in the bags. As it pushes the air through the lines, see it? And up, 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 up to the dialysis, I mean to the saline bag. And there it is, getting all the air out of the lines. It's important to do that because you don't want an air embolism. You know? Get an air bubble back in your blood, in your veins, an artery. So as it does that, this is my cue. Like I said, it has 23 minutes. It's, it's a countdown. This is my cue to go ahead and prep. And I'll show you what that prep is. Okay, so to prep, here's what you need. You need to get your gloves out. Okay, you need to get your tourniquet out and ready. So... Go ahead and do that. My tongue kit is ready to slide up my arm. I've got that done. Okay, now we're going to get some two by twos. We're going to get some tape. Okay, as you can see, I already have lines or columns of tapes ready. Okay, and that's for me to seal the gauze on my arm after treatment. So, I take the tape, fold in one end, always keep one end folded, pull out about three or four inches, doesn't have to be perfect, and we're going to fold the tip on that end, okay, so there's one. 
And we're going to do six of those. Let me show you what we do with each one. And take a two by two and fold it in half. We fold it one third of the way, another third of the way, just like so. And then with that folded part facing down, we're going to land it right in the center of one of the tapes, one of the strips of tapes, so that you get this. Okay? And then just attach it to your board. And that's what I'm going to do with all those, and I'll bring you back when I move on to the next one. Okay, so we have our six tape split two by twos folded in the center. Okay, and that's to help stop the, the bleeding, cover the needles. Well, once it's inserted, and then we pull that out and. Alright, so we're going to take another strip, not as long as the other one. It's about that long, I guess two and a half inches or so. Maybe three, I don't know. But uh, this is going to be for your wings. So here's what I do, because the wings are kind of small. They're not that wide. I like to take uh, and make two of these. And then take the scissors and cut it right along the center. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you. Okay, so you take the tape and just in the center, go ahead and slice all the way up. Okay, so you have one wing. There's two wings, and because the ends are folded, they'll be easy to grab off one another. So you do that one more time. Fold your end. Okay. Fold this end. Then cut straight up. And I make them long because my, I have little fingers. Of course, I have a small hand. I'm a woman, whatever. Hester has bigger hands than I do. And so I make them long because it's hard for him to manage little strips. Okay, so I got my wings. Four. Because they're wings on either side. Of the, of the needle. So you need two for each needle. So there's four there. Okay, so now we need, I like to secure my lines once the syringes are in, so I take the venous and the arterial lines on my wrist. So that's simple, you just take two strips, Okay, and just line it up. Okay. Alright. And that's it. So I'm prepped with that. I've got my gloves. To put on so that when I go to insert or canalize to the cannulation, I've got my tourniquet. Okay, I've got my hand sanitizer right here. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a few gauzes and put them over here by the dialyzer side because when Hupster primes the dialyzer he's gonna have to hold a piece of gauze on the 
on the uh, end of it to catch any fluid. Otherwise, that fluid detection center is going to go off. Alright, so I'm just going to lay that down right there. Okay. And at this point, I'm going to weigh myself, take my standing blood pressure, my sitting blood pressure, and my temperature. going to chart it into my next stage iPad. All right? So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm signed in and this is using Wi-Fi. Go to the new treatment session and I'm getting ready to put in all my information. So I, I verify the cartridge type I verify the cartridge type is cartridge 170C, it's usually on the tag. Uh, cartridge 170C, it's right on this tag right here. So I verified that. And then the lot number, okay, 77027 on the last five, 77027. Seven. All right, one zero two seven seven zero two seven. So I changed that. It says is the warmer being used? Yes, it is. So then pre treatment weight, it's got my previous post weight already on there. It has my dry weight information, and then it'll tell you how much we need weight we need to remove. So let me enter my current weight. I'll be right back. All right, the machine is done priming. Let me get my sitting blood pressure in there. I got it in there. Take this cuff off and go to this machine. Okay, it gives you triple eights. So you hit the mute button. Let me get my glove. You'll get one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, E, F, G, H, yeah. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's correct. Hit mute again to let it know that you've seen it. And now you'll get the triple zeros on the right column, uh, red alarm area and you'll get the 23 which is what it has primed up to so now it's time to snap and tap and uh, your lines before we hit the stop button the stop button is lit it's the only one that's lit but you do not press it until you do your snap and tap okay so I'll be right back Okay, so now we are going to do the snap and tap. Let me get by. We're going to snap and tap the lines. We're going to snap the lines and tap uh, the pressure, access pressure pod and the dialyzer. And uh, that's to get any excess air that might still be in the lines out. Just for security purposes. Here's the red line. The red line is your arterial line. That's the bottom needle. This is the line that's responsible for the blood taken out of your body to travel to. This is the line. So we're going to start at the saline bag and in an L kind of shape, a fist apart. See? That's what we're going to do. You do that all the way down to your pressure pump, which is the little disc that has that membrane. And then you take it and you tap it, flip it, flip it back, tap it again, flip it, flip it back, tap it again, and we'll move on to the dialyzer on the left. 
okay? Here, we need to hold on to the die lizer. There's a little plastic band around the top. We want to pull that out. Okay, okay. We'll take that out. This one on the bottom. Take that out. And then you pull your lines, you turn your dialyzer to where the boot clamp is now at the top. You free the lines from that little line hole over here. Then you take these tabs. These are white tabs. One, two, and there's one over here by the clamp. Three, you take them out. Okay? And with your lines as straight as can be, okay? To do is holding the bottom of the dialyzer with the blue clamp on tap on top you're going to one two three tap straighten up tap straighten up tap and straighten up and what you're looking for is this air right here you want to look at the top for some air all right so we've done that so with the blue clamp on top we're going to slide it into some carrier right there, making sure the clamp is on the top, and we're going to move on now to the Venus. So essentially what we're doing is we're going around the cycler, okay? That's, good. That's how the blood travels. Okay, so now we've got our Venus. The Venus is the very top line. Okay, hold on. Let me untangle this before I start. Okay, the Venus is the top line that comes out from the top of the cartridge on the right. So again, L shape, okay, while the other way, like this. Because you're going up from the cartridge and up to the sailing bag. And this is called snapping. So we're snapping the line up to the saline. Okay. And now we get to do it all over again. to the pressure pod. This is what I mean, how your lines always get tangled from my work. <laughs> tap, 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 flip, flip, tap, 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 flip, flip, tap, 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 flip, flip. All right, now back to the dialyzer. Here's where we do something a little different. Okay, take the dialyzer out of its cradle. All right, again, tap, 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 always looking, tap, 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 all right, I see a little bit of air there, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a gauze and we're going to put it over the cap, all right, hold on to the wings, and loosen the cap until you see that air coming out of it. You'll see the fluid, and then you close it right back. Just a little bit came out onto the gauze, not much. But you want to hold the gauze in there because the fluid's uh, detection sensor is on the bottom, and if it's just a drop touches it, she'll start screaming. So once you've primed it, that's called priming, then you want to clamp, all right? So you're done with that. And if air ever gets in there, the machine will alarm, and that's what you would need to do. Most people use a syringe. I just do that, okay? So now we'll go back to the Venus. Snap, 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 snap all the way back up to the saline, the saline bag.
says, check blood sectors venous pressure high during prime, including recirculation step 23.5. So mute that. Recovery. Okay, so it's got three minutes. Rechecking itself. Evidently, it detected some kind of pressure or air pressure in one of the lines when I snapped and tapped, and that's exactly why we snap and tap, folks. That's exactly why. So it's do it's uh, doing the systems check again. I got it going. Okay, so while it's it's giving me the triple zeros and twenty three again, so that means it's system checking again from that pressure. I went ahead and hit the arrow up to six bars on my warmer. That's how hot I like it. You do four, two, whatever. It warms up. It keeps the blood warm when you get it back so you don't freeze to death. Alright, so I did the snap and tap and I got that air pressure along. So I'm going to snap and tap one more time just to secure it. Okay, making sure all my lines are in there tight. Okay. All my clamps are open. Okay. Okay, that's closed because it's got the fluid. Alright, those are all fungibles so have snapped. All the clamps are unclamped. Now that I've snapped and tapped, there are no more alarms. I'm going to hit the stop button. All right. So now that I've hit the stop button, I am going to prime my saline T. And that is on the arterial line. You can see it's a white clamp. That's your saline T clamp. We're going to prime that by opening this up and letting the air out. Let the, you'll see the fluid come up. A couple of drops come out, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just dab it with a two by two. Okay, and then we're going to clamp. All right. So, we're holding on to this. We're going to find our dialysate line, which also has attached to it the partner to this one, the other uh, white line. So... The dialysate line is green, so here's the green and here's the white. So we gotta separate these two. We gotta connect white to white. So first thing we do is we clamp the green, clamp the white so that we can open it without fluid and air going all over the place. So hold on to the wing, turn to the left, disconnect that. Alright, uh, hold on to the wing, turn to the left. And disconnect the cap from the saline T, connect white to white, as soon as I can see. <laughs> okay, screw that on there, make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, drop the lines, we're done with that. You're going to take your clamped dialysate line. And you're gonna find your clamped dialysate line on your bag that's on the warmer, okay? I don't know if you can see. There we go. <laughs> Lord, gotta babysit these things. All right, so again, you take your dialysate line that you just disconnected the saline line to, you find your dialysate line that's attached to your dialysate bag on the warmer. You take that off. Take the cap off of that. Make sure they're both clamped now or you'll get squirted. Alright, and then you connect these two together. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now you unclamp both of these lines. Okay, so that's the first line you have, you have opened that was previously clamped. Alright, 
so now that we've done that what we need to do is find the yellow line which is attached to the venus and we're going to clamp both of these okay that's your waistline it is not a sterile line so you're going to once you clamp it you're going to find your wing you're going to disconnect Take this little cap that was left over and put it into that end of the waistline. That's just to make sure, to ensure that leaks out. And you have to find your waistline, which is attached to your pole. It's kind of wrapped around the pole. Okay. It's right behind here. I'll show you in just a second. See, it's yellow. And you're going to find the part where you disconnect. You take the cap off. Make sure it's clamped. Take the cap off. Okay, so we find the yellow line back here. This is the waistline and it runs from the pole all the way to the restroom and into the sink and to the drain. All right, so we take the cap off of that and we connect the yellow line. And we connect it together with the other yellow. And then we unclamp those lines. So right now we have two lines unclamped. That's your dirty line, your waistline, and your dialysate line, your green line. Okay? Now, all the frangibles are both broken. Okay, we've done all that. So at this point in time, we're ready to cannulize, and that means to or cannulate, I think is what it's called. And that means to put the needles in. But before we do that, I have to program the machine. Okay, so this is a toggle button. It looks like a blender. Hit that, takes you to the volume screen. That's your dialysate volume. That's how much... Uh, dialysate is going to be used and that's 20 liters that's four bags 5 10 15 20 here is whatever I'm taking off okay so it is 1.4 plus 0.3 for rinse back you always have to add 0.3 for rinse back so I have to go to 1.47 That'll get me to my target weight. Okay, so I'm done. Now I gotta go back to the main screen. So I hit that blender again, which is the toggle button. All right, this is how many liters of dialysate per hour, 7.0. Uh, pretty much you divide how many hours um, into the number of liters. So I usually do three hours, now I do about two and a half. So I'm gonna make this an eight. That'll bring my time down. Well, it didn't, because I have to put this in. Ultra filtration rate. Um, this is, should be a third of my weight into the 20 liter, the third of my weight. So it's 1.7 um, and a third of that would be about 35, 40, maybe 45. I'm gonna do let's see what that gives me. 318 Two hours and 50 minutes. Let's see if I can do eight. All right, 
two and a half hours. So this is how many liters of dialysate per hour, the ultrafiltration rate liters per hour. And then this I will adjust once I'm, I cannulate and I raise up the pump. Okay, so we're ready to insert the needles now. Okay, so after all that, <laughs> it's time to can do the cannulation to insert the syringes, the needles. For all of you who are faint of heart when you see blood or anything like that, or needles going into someone, look away because that's what's about to happen. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I've got Hubster with me. Let me turn this to see. Here's my helper, wave. <laughs> and he's got his syringes over there. See them right there in the corner, ready to put in. So let me come back to me. All right, so we're going to do this as close to the arm as possible. I mean, I want you all to see how to cannula cannula. Is it or canalize? What are those words? How to put the needle in, okay? <laughs> so here we go. I want to scoot over to the cycler as close as I can. Okay. Can you put the brakes on me? Just step on it. There we go. That way I don't go moving around. Okay, let me show you guys. So here's the iPad. See those numbers? This is the arterial pressure, venous pressure, and effluent pressure. Nothing's happening because I'm not connected yet. Once it starts happening, once I get connected, these numbers are going to read the pressure of my blood going through. And then I just adjust it. And I need to adjust it by pressing the blood pressure volume key. It's it's leveled at 200. My prescription says to go up to 450. Sometimes I can only do 400. Sometimes I can do 460. Just depends on the pressure of the day. You know, how my blood is doing. So I have my iPad right in front of me and I'll keep track of those numbers. Also, on the bottom, it has the time of the amount of time of dialyzing which is 2 hours and 31 minutes. This will be a half hour interval and it'll tell me when I need to take a blood pressure and I gotta, and I gotta detail it in there, chart it in there. See it says add vitals. Um, and that's every 30 minutes. Then it has the blood flow rate, the treatment. When the treatment started, it'll clock in. Then it'll have the dialysis rate, left to process, which is the whole 20 liters right now because I haven't started. It has the ultra filtration rate. And once I start, it'll read. And then what's left to process, this is the total amount that I'm needing to take off, 1.7 uh, liters. All right, so I keep a track on that. I can just look at this iPad and, it, and it'll tell me where I'm at and the process of my treatment. All right, so without further ado, here comes the fun. All right, got my little pillow, and I taped a chuck over it to catch any excess blood that may drip. Let me tell you something about my lines. On this fistula, AV fistula, the arterial is at the bottom. Venus is always at the top. Arterial, Artie, as I like to call him, he's a gusher. Gusher. Please for just look at him and he'll bleed. The Venus is a bit more uh, stubborn. She really doesn't like to be messed around with. So um, this is the one that always gives me the problems. This is the one that has caused 23 infiltrations. And sometimes she'll make him infiltrate. So um, I have to stick close to the bottom as possible until I go see the surgeon and they go back in there for the third time and they try to fix her up here. For some reason, it just, she won't hold the needle. It, it'll just blow. 
So we're avoiding this until I see the surgeon. I see him this Friday. And then, uh, so I, I need to, do, I only have this small room to mess with. And they have to be, the syringes have to be at least two fingers apart. Otherwise, you're going to get recirculating blood. You know, you're pulling out blood, it's coming back here, and guess what? It's getting pulled out again instead of going through your body, you know, in other areas. So that's why you can't have them close together. But here we go. So I'm just going to do a little dab of this hand sanitizer over my gloves, just extra precaution. I do that. Okay. All right. And also over my side, just extra. So after washing hands and washing the side, okay, putting on gloves. There's one more. We're going to put our tourniquet on. Okay. Not tight yet. I like it nice and tight. Okay, we're going to feel for our thrill. There you go, right there. Okay, now it's time. I'm going to try to zoom you in. Yes, can't zoom in this way. All right. Well, you all just have to watch it this way, I guess. I have to turn the camera around in order to zoom. There's a thought, camera people. <laughs> all right, so for one minute, we have to sterilize with the alcohol prep pad or two by two. Okay, so once you've done that, you grab your syringe. These are 15, 15 gauge syringes, okay? Open that up, pull out the syringe. Syringe comes with wings. Okay? There's a smooth side and then there's a little embossed side. You want the smooth side. It's got two little bars at each end. And then you just want to pinch them together, hold it straight across, and pull out the cover. Now this is sterile, so it can't touch anything. And there's the syringe. See? And that tip right there, that's called a bevel. Alright. So I'm going to start with the arterial, the bottom needle first, always, so you can see. Okay. And I got to find where I want to go with this. I think I know where. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Flash. Got a flash. Do you see that flash? That's a flash. That means you're in. So my hubster will take down the wing. You see why I gotta make the wing long? Because his fingers are okay. Okay, now he's going to take the other side, 
Wait, give me a, a two by two. It's just a little bit. Okay. All right, perfect. So now we have to cover the needle, the entry point. And that's one of those takes that you saw me make with the two by two folded. And that one is in. Okay, so what I like to do because this is kind of heavy on this end and it can pull the needle and I don't have a chevron underneath to protect it from falling out. So I like to tape Hold on, let me raise this up a little Okay, how so will you take that for me right there please? Okay. All right. So he's he's taped my rotation. I can let this go. It won't go anywhere. Now it's time for the Venus. This is the problem child. Yep, yep, yep. So take that syringe out. Okay. Again, find the smooth side. Okay, pinch the wings together, just like so. Hold it straight across, pull it straight across. Okay. All right. Now this one's a little different. This one's deeper in, so I have to go at a different angle. But once I get my flash, then I know I'm in, then I can straighten it out and land the plane. So, Hop's just going to look for the flash and he'll let me know because I can't see at this point. Flash. So Whoa. Now, huh? Okay, Flash. So now I'm landing the plane and Hop's just going to take down my wings for me. He's going to ground me. <laughs> okay, so he's got both tapes down. So now I've got to cover the syringe. I mean the needle entry point. Okay. As you can see, I have a flash on both lines. Okay, that's a good sign. So, we're going to take this also to my arm. Okay, very good. All right, so now here's what we do. We're going to, see that clamp is open? We're going to leave it open. Why? Because we want to bleed back the blood to see, check the flow of the venous. So we do the venous first. So we're going to loosen the cap on the top and we're going to let the blood flow. That's a good flow. That means we're in there good. Okay, so now we tighten the cap. We're going to clamp the line. And now Hopster is going to disconnect the venous line from the saline bag. He's going to clamp top and bottom, disconnect the line. He's going to pass it to me while his hand is out because he's going to grab this little cap and put it in the sharp container. I'm going to take the venous line. Hold on. Don't do it yet. And I'm going to attach it to my venous syringe line. And then I'm going to unclamp and unclamp. So I'm done with this right now. Now, Hubster, oh, fine. he's going to take that syringe, show the syringe. It's a 10 milliliter syringe. And he's going to connect it to the venous. And then he's going to unclamp the top clamp 
glue clamp and he's going to draw 10 millimeters just in case. So 10 millimeters. He's going to draw that down. He leaves the yeah, he has to clamp the top and he leaves the syringe in there. Now we're going to move on to the arterial and we're going to do the same thing. Okay. Clamp is open. So I'm going to bleed back. That's a good bleed back. So I'm going to tighten the cap. Clamp. Now Hubs is going to go to the arterial, the red line, and he's going to clamp top, clamp bottom. He's going to disconnect the line. He's going to have his, he's going to make sure the lines are untangled. He's going to hold his hand out for this. This goes into the sharps container because it has blood on it. And I always double check to make sure lines are clamped. I'm going to connect these two together. This is what I did with the Venus. Okay, nice and tight. Then I'm going to unclamp and unclamp and I'm done. Now, Hofstra has to take the 10 milliliter syringe of the second one and he's going to connect it to the arterial. He's going to then unclamp and pull 10 milliliters of saline from the bag and then he's going to clamp. At this point, we are ready to dialyze. Alright, so we have to go to the machine, hubster hit, just touch the screen, hit one, two, three, okay, and hit the green kidney, that's for treatment. Now the machine will start. And now I'm going to get some live numbers, pressure numbers on this iPad, okay? So, you hear it, you hear the pump revving up? You need to go up to 250. All right, he's going up to 250. Pressure looks good. The pressure should always be 50% of whatever the volume is, um, whatever the flow is, blood pressure flow. So go up to 300. He's at 300. Still looking good. Still under 50%. Go to 350. All right, hold on a second, get rid of that. Okay, still looking good, under 50%. Go to 400. Pressure still under 50%, because half of 400 is 200, and it's well under 200. 450. <clears throat> target and all is well. We're on the 50% of 450. And that's it. So now I'm in treatment. Everything looks good. Numbers look great. I'm going to sit back and relax. And the people, when I'm ready to come off of here in about uh, two hours and what is my two hours and 36 minutes, uh, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how we end treatment. All right. See you then. Okay, so Hofstra went ahead and unplugged the warmer because as you can see, all the bags are empty. All the dialysate that was in those bags are now in the bag that's sitting on the warmer. And that's gone down quite considerably. And when it goes down that low, you want to kind of lower your warmer or turn it off. I just have him turn it off, unplug it, because otherwise that dialysate can get very hot. And then you're going to get some arms. And you don't want that heat in your needle either, in your arm, and burn yourself. So we've got uh, 17 minutes left. Let me show you over here. 
Uh, let's see. 16 minutes left. And we'll be back and show you how we end treatment. Okay, so far, it's been a good run. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, everyone, so now I've ended treatment. Everything is at zero. Uh, Huff's to press the stop button, so that's my rinse bag volume. Um, let me show you real close. It says 277. Okay, so, but before we can rinse back, we have to take care of the arterial first. So I'm going to kind of go like this so that you can see Huff's to not at the same time. So it's time to... Uh, clamp. Let me get this off of here. Okay. So I need to go to my arterial line, which is the red. Okay. I need to clamp the light clamp. Are you on my? Line. Right it might be underneath the. Okay, yeah, thank you. And clamp the red. Okay. And we're going to disconnect. Go ahead and hit the. Yeah. Okay, disconnecting the red. Hops is going to clamp. It should already be no, clamped. No, 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 no. He's going to remove the syringe with the 10 mil. Okay, and he's going to connect the arterial, and then he's going to unclamp that clamp over there. So, I have my syringe at the end of my syringe line. I'm going to unclamp and flush the arterial and clamp. Okay, so I'm done with that. So now, we're going to hit the rinse back, which he's going to hit the add fluid button. And now I'm getting my my blood back. And with this uh, home hemodialysis machine, you get all your blood back. The um, the dialysis, this right here, it'll turn clear. Whereas when I was going to the center, those machines, you don't get all your blood back. You know, you get most of it, but not all of it. And the dialysis. The kidney, what I call the kidney, usually stays red and your blood is in there. So, as you can see, it'll start clearing the blood. It'll start, it's pushing the blood with saline back into my body. And you'll see it starting to clear up. It's getting lighter and lighter. Let's see. If you can see it, it's getting lighter and lighter. See that? Yep. Yeah. And if you can see, the dialyzers get lighter and lighter too. There'll be just a small tinge of pink, but it'll be clear. It's already clear. See, it's already clear. Lines are clear. So we got 15 left, 12, 9, 5, 2, and we've reached our zeros. We're done, but we have to disconnect here. So we're going to clamp. Hold on. Clamp the white on the Venus, clamp the blue, which is Venus, and then I'm going to disconnect here. Hop's just going to give me the syringe. He's going to clamp. It should already be clamped, I guess. Uh, no, maybe not. It's already clamped. Okay. And then I'm not going to flush anything because I already got my blood back. But I can if I wanted to, but I don't need to. So I'm done. I am done. So now I have to remove my syringe. Hubster, while well, Hubster. Uh, turns off the machine because we're done there. So he's just going to turn the power off. Alright. So that's done. He'll break it down in a minute.
But right now he's got to help me with the syringes. So he's going to get his sharp container next to him. And we're going to start removing these needles. And what I do is I start with the venous. And I take off the tapes. I take the wings off. Okay, from the bottom up towards me. Start from the bottom up towards me. Peel them right off. Okay, then one of these little buddies that I made earlier. Remember, I made six of them. So I used two, I have four left. You'll see why. So I'm going to tape over the syringe site. Okay, then I'm going to remove. The tape that's holding the line. I got it, babe. Thank you. And pull up this little uh, compartment, which is where the needle is going to slide into. And then with my hand, I'm going to pull the syringe out and simultaneously press down some pressure. And Hufsa will grab the syringe. The syringe, let me get that for a minute. The syringe is secure in that little compartment. See that? See? So now he's going to put that in the Sharpies while I press down and stop the bleeding on the site, the, the uh, needle site. So I just press down. And it usually takes less than a minute, about a minute or less, for it to caught and, you know, to stop bleeding. So. That's one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get ready on this one. And I'm surprised Artie didn't squirt. Because <laughs> he's a gusher. He is. Well, Jerry on me is, yeah, definitely a gusher. But they behave today, both of them. Yeah. Now, I do, um, I did have an alarm in the middle of treatment. Because my venous line started to slip out. I had to push it back in and double tape it. Because um, for some reason it just keeps wanting to slide out. I don't know if it's the pressure that moves it or what. So, Hobson and I discussed it and we decided we're going to go ahead and start using chevrons to secure that needle so it doesn't slide back out. So we're going to do that. That will be in the next treatment. And all it is is a piece of tape underneath underneath the line and it's a V and it you know just a V and it holds the needle underneath yeah so it doesn't you know you can pull it won't come out I mean not hard all right so it's been about a minute so I'm good there so now I'm going to we're going to remove the arterial so I hope she's going to come around and get ready to grab this syringe and dispose of it in the sharpie or the sharp, I call it sharpie, it's sharp. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's go ahead and remove the top. Okay. And we're going to remove our gauze, I mean our wings. Just grab it, sometimes it's there we go. Yep. And just hold it up. Okay, there's one. Always from the bottom and up towards you. Always do that. Okay. See? I'm pulling. Okay. So I got that. So now I'm ready to pull this syringe out. I get one of my 2 by 2s and tape that I made earlier, which you all saw me make. Which means now I have two left. Then I take the little uh, syringe compartment here, and I'm getting ready to hold it still as I pull the needle. And it's in the compartment, and the host has it. And he'll put it in the Sharpie, and I'm going to hold and press down, okay, on both sides. 
because both because I want to reopen the top one with the pressure, you know. All right, so I'm almost done carrying for my side. Now that I'm done here, the rest is up to me. Hopsy can go ahead and break down the uh, machine, the cycler. And we removed the bag from down here. We drained it out and helps to remove it and dispose of it. And um, we'll put a new one in um, tonight. Hopefully uh, it'll work. It just kept saying that there was fluid in the bin, but there wasn't any. So I, I like I said earlier, it must have been a leak in the bag once it filled up. So we went ahead and drained it, drained up the bag, and uh, we removed it. We cleaned the bin. Uh, with some uh, one part alcohol, I mean, one part bleach and, and what is it? To 10 parts water. And we wiped it down. And then we sanitized it with some of that sanitizing solution. And uh, we're going to put the fan on it and leave it on there possibly all night. And in the morning, we'll go ahead and prepare a batch. Before Hepsi goes to work, we'll come in here and we'll prepare a batch and make sure there's no leaks before we put the bag in there. And then if I keep getting it along, then I'm just going to have to call um, the tech, you know, uh, Alton. I'll call the nurse first, but I don't know what my plans are, and, and go from there just in case there's another procedure that I don't know about to do, you know, when this happens. But other than that, we're good. Pops has removed all the bags. He's opened the cycler. Um, of course, the warmer is unplugged. He's put everything in a biohazard bag. Um, I even know that I had gotten those a few years ago for my syringes, for my diabetes. And I got like four rolls or something. I gave one roll to Mama. and had three in the pantry. And they would take forever to fill up. And now that I'm on the pump, really forever. You know, the insulin pump. But look how handy they come in. Hmm, imagine. Yeah, so. But, okay, so I stopped bleeding. It's probably this. So what I'm going to do now is going to remove the Venus, okay, tape. And you're the last two soldiers right here. Put a clean dressing on. Okay, we're going to do the same. For the arterial, so you stop bleeding. And put a clean dressing on. And then we're going to take my tapes here that I've lined up right here together. And we're going to take uh, four of them. One, two, three, four. And just pull it out off the board. I think I only got three, but that should be good anyway. All right. So there's three tapes on here. And pull one at a time. I may need one more. Okay. There's another one. That's good enough. I think maybe one more. Right there. Get some pressure on there. Alright. I'm good. Alright. I'll take this off before I go to bed or in the morning. It depends. Alright. And then what I like to do is wash it and put some cocoa uh, with some warm soapy water and then put some uh, dried off and put some cocoa butter on it. That way I don't get, you know, scars and stuff like that. So I've taken off my gloves and now I take off the shuck off this pillow, which I use as an armrest to keep the, the needles in. Okay, take all the tape off. Alright, all the tape is off, and this goes in the trash. And that's it.
we are done. Hofstra has uh, closed the cycle door. He removed the fluid um, detection sensor from its cradle so that we don't forget to check it in the morning. And, uh, <laughs> see, Hofstra had just cleaned that so it was still moist. That's how sensitive this is. But anyway, once it air dries, we'll go ahead and put the sensor and sit it. Actually, I'll sit it down here if it's not wet. And that way, we'll know to test that. Because if it sits in the cradle, more than likely, you know, we, we could forget to check it. And we have to check that sensor. It's very vital that it works. Because if there's any fluid, any leaks whatsoever, you know, yeah, you want to know, so you can stop treatment, do an emergency rinse back, and, uh, you know, get your blood back and, and get off of there, and and then, you know, dialyze another day. But, so it's very important not to forget to check that every day. Anyway, good people, now my job is to chart, chart my treatment, okay? And treatment charting, which is the sitting blood pressure and pulse, standing blood pressure and pulse, my temperature, and then my post-treatment weight to see just how much it affected my dry weight. A lot of times I go below my dry weight, you know, so, which pretty much means blood pressure is good and stuff like that. But anyway, it also asks, like, if you had labs drawn, if you have any shortness of breath, any chest pains or palpitations, any swelling. All these assessment ones are very important that, you know, if you have any of those things, like shortness of breath, palpitations, chest pain, yeah, that's something you really want to alert your team because, you know, it's affecting your health, you know, it could be... You don't know, because dialysis, you know, it affects the heart. It could be pretty rough on the heart, which is why home hemodialysis is key to getting the slowest process of filtering out whatever the body, the waste, okay, whatever the body doesn't need, and that's really hurting other organs. So that process could be a little harsh on the heart, because the heart's like, well, wait a minute. The kidney's supposed to be doing this. You know, what's going on here? It's going out a different way. But anyway, I'm just trying to help you understand how it could be very stressful on the heart, you know, to dialyze. So this is like the slowest process when you do it six days a week. And nocturnal, when I go into nocturnal while I sleep, it'll do it at a slower pace to where it's the least stressful on your body especially your heart. Now, I just had heart surgery. I just had a, a new valve put in. So, you know, it's all good right now, but it's still, um, it had, that was in January, so I'm only months in with this new valve. And so, yeah, that's something that you really want to monitor closely, you know. But anyway, this uh, prescription the six days a week and dialyzing at home, you know, with the slow, you, if you do it six days, you don't have to take so much off at once. Whereas when you go to the center, you only go three days. So they try to take off as much as possible in those three days. And you build fluid daily. You know, when you don't dialyze, you're building fluid daily anyway. But if you miss a day, that's fluid buildup, waste buildup. And that makes you feel yucky and lousy, you know. So when you have the opportunity to do it at a slower pace, more days a week, it's all good. You get energy back. You can expand your diet. It's like getting a semblance of your old self back. It really is. So um, I'm new into this. This is only my second week, helps you and I. And so far, you know, we've went through our trials trying to do things on our own and remembering stuff, but we're ironing out, you know, all the little uh, stumbling blocks, you know, we're working through it, and what you find the first week, I tell you what, it's pretty aggravating and stressful, but we got through it, we prayed over it, and we got our heads
heads together and we're doing it now and it's working so um and the thing is is that we wanted to work things out on our own because the team was right there I already had a conference call um and uh and you know they asked they check on you and stuff like that so i just told them no we need to work this out on our own we we have all the information right in front of us we have the books the guides the, you know it tells you what the alarms mean how to clear the alarms and proceed with your treatment so we had all the material the tools to work through it together we just had to get our minds together to work through things together so we did that we worked on it we did it and now we're dialyzing just fine now if we can get the pure flow what's it saying there He's trying to put the sack in. He's saying open door, low sack. Oh, doing. okay. So he's putting the sack. I thought it was a, a fluid leak again. I'm like, I give up. <laughs> All right. So he's trying to put the sack in on the pure flow so that we don't have to do the hanging bags tomorrow. This is a lot easier because when this bag fills up, I get three treatments in one bag. So that's less supplies I have to stack up. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, so... This is the post-treatment uh, charting that I'm getting ready to do now. And then that's it. Then I send it to um, my team at the clinic. And she'll come in tomorrow and she'll see my treatment. She'll see all, all the information. You know, if there's anything off, she'll call me and let me know. and Or she'll come out here. So it's all cool. It's all good. It's fantastic, actually. So I'm going to leave you good people with that. And until the next one, uh, maybe we'll show you how we uh, do the pure flow as soon as we get it working right. Yeah, you know, we'll go through the steps on setting that up so you all can see that. It's a lot easier. I think there's a lot less to do. But anyway, until the next one. God bless you all. Love one another. Take care of one another. And until the next one, Hobson and I say goodnight. Night. <laughs> Bye, guys.